Greetings in the name which is above every name, that of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. This is part two of the study, Extraordinary, from Acts of the Apostles, chapter six, and continuing from the seventh verse. And the word of God increased, and the number of the of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Extraordinary. Are you an extraordinary person? who is filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire, who has the divine unction. Stephen was such a man. And it is in these days that God is looking for those who want to be extraordinary, want to be filled with divine unction. Are you one of those? Are you prepared to go all the way and let God do what he wants to do? Yes. Are you seeking to be deep in God? There are those, there are many, many of them who just want to be on the ordinary level. The ordinary level of God, with God. Don't want anything different. But I'm different. Whether you want to go, go to the extraordinary in God. I do. I will. And I'm already going there. And it's day by day being extraordinary. Because there is that desire to go on and on and on with God himself. God having his way in us and through us for his own glory. So let's look more about Stephen. But first, what was happening as the, as the apostles had laid their hands upon those who had been identified to serve at tables. The apostles had been released for that which they had wanted to do, that which was upon their hearts, to be ones of prayer and ones of the word of God and to preach in the divine unction. That's what's missing in these days. The preaching of the word of God in the divine unction. So the word of God increased. And as the word of God increased, the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And including in that great number, and there was a great number of the priests were obedient to the faith. So it wasn't just ordinary people. It was also those who were ordinary as well amongst the priests who wanted, who were drawn, who heard the word of God and responded to the word of God. That's what happens when preaching is in divine unction, that the Holy Ghost has his way. And as he, as he speaks, speaks through the vessel that is his, as Stephen undoubtedly was, and the apostles were, 
when they had been released to do that which is upon their hearts. Great conviction would have fallen upon these priests and they would have seen that according to the word of God as the word of God was open to them that they would have seen in their scriptures that Jesus Christ had fulfilled the scriptures and Jesus Christ as God the Son as the Messiah as the promised one the anointed one the one who gave his life for them they saw and they responded they heard the, the move of the Holy Spirit speaking to their spirits and because of that they were born again from above they were born of God and they became the very sons of God. It is quite amazing, quite wonderful that when the Holy Ghost has his way then God works on his own scale even in the midst of opposition even in the midst of persecution. That's God. Let's concentrate now on Stephen. What are we told about him? Full of faith and power. The two went together. And it is Holy Ghost power. That's where the power comes from. And without the Holy Ghost, there's no power. It's just dead religion. Empty words. Stephen. Extraordinary, yes. But the extraordinary is there for those who will respond have the desire and will act in accordance with the word of God. God very much delighting of those who respond to his word. And what is he, he looking for? Yes, to respond to his word. He's also looking to loyalty to himself loyalty to the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord Jesus Christ thirst and preeminent in all things within us within our lives yet not I but Christ that liveth in me for Life comes out of death. And unless there is first death, death to self, death to the things of this world, the things of the world, the flesh and the devil, then resurrection life follows. His life and all the fullness of God when there is that desire, that wanting, wanting, that longing to go on and on and on further with God. Stephen had tasted that the Lord is good. And in his nothingness, God was able to do all things that he wanted to do.
because Stephen is the evidence of a man wholly sold out to God. And that is the same today when God finds someone who wants God for himself and will let God have his way in all things. That's where the power came with Stephen. Because God filled him with himself. Because God filled him with himself, Stephen had that faith, that expectancy, that knowledge that God was doing what he wanted to do. And because of this, we're told great wonders and miracles. Stephen did. Yes, but it was the Christ in him. The Christ working in him and through him. The Christ having his own way in and through Stephen. Stephen being as one with the Lord Jesus Christ. Being in the very likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, ava that availability is still there today. Because... Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever, the unchangeable Christ. And what he did with Stephen, he can and he will do today when the conditions are met. Just like Stephen. And what were the conditions meet him? Submitting to Christ. But Stephen, oh, I told, there was, yes, there were great, these great wonders and miracles. And people were coming, coming to the Lord. But who else is around when things like this happen? Oh, don't be at all surprised, be prepared. The very devil himself was never far away when God is at work. And who were these who came to oppose Stephen? There were those who refused to accept the truth of God. Refused to accept. They rejected the Holy Ghost. And in rejecting the Holy Ghost, they were Fighting against God. Yes, they, oh yes, they were ones of the synagogue, all right. These Libertines, Cyrenians and Alexandrians. But they had, yes, a form of a religion. And denied the power just as the scriptures tell us, there are those who do have a form of religion. And it's still evidence today. Ones, yes, oh, they might wear clothes that, clothes that identify them as uh, supposedly people of God. But again, Unless they have given themselves wholly to the Lord Jesus Christ and been born again from above, they're nothing in the sight of God because they don't have the living God within them. 
And the resistance, even in these days of the Holy Ghost, it's no different than in the days of Stephen. And it is the God will only work in and through those who are his own. That's the distinction. Can't work with those who do not have his life within them. Stephen was so filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and that these Libertines, Cyrenians and Alexandrians resisted because they were content amongst themselves. They only wanted that which was for themselves. They would not submit to God. And God, rightly so, will have nothing to do with them. And it is the same today that God will have nothing to do with those who resists the Holy Ghost. And it's that resistance in the Holy, of the Holy Ghost which makes a clear distinction in these days of those who have been born again of God because when someone is born again of God, they will want the things of God. They will want God for himself. And when? Just as in the days of Stephen or even in the days of our Lord, were driven out of the synagogue because their eyes have been opened to the truth. The truth of the word of God. The word of God became the living word. The word of God had started to mean something to them. Today, it's just the same. That when the word of God becomes alive in someone, even within the church or a fellowship, those who are not of God, those who have not been born from above, will seek to drive them out because they will not, do not want to know the truth of the word of God. And what happened with Stephen? With those who opposed him? Those who opposed the truth, what did they do? They brought in those who would accuse Stephen. Brought in those who will lie. And note, they stirred the people to come and bring false accusations against Stephen. The elders too and the scribes, they all came against Stephen and brought him to the council. 
Yes, they brought in before those who were called the religious leaders. But the religious leaders also were ones who resisted the Holy Ghost. The religion of the day. Just as it was against the Lord of Glory. were against Stephen as well. Because Stephen had within him that which the religion of the day did not have within. Stephen had the Lord of glory within him. He had the Son of God within him. He had God himself within him. And when someone has God within. Yes, it will stir up those who do not have God within them. It will stir up the very devil himself. But Stephen knew that no matter what he had to go through, he will go through it. Because nothing could separate him from the love of God. Nothing could separate him from the very life of God. Having started out as being filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire, having tasted the Lord is good, having tasted the things of God. There was nothing else for Stephen. He had to go through. He had to continue, but continue in the knowledge that he was in the perfect will of God. And no matter what happened, even should he die as a martyr, he would go all the way through, nothing would deter him. And these, as we said, false witnesses, saying that just like the Lord, that Stephen was bringing blasphemous words against this holy place. Yes, they were taken up with the outward again. The religion is always taken up with that which is of the outward, that which can be seen, that which is the physical, rather than the inward working of the Spirit of God. They were saying it was against the law. But they were twisting and saying that Stephen had said things which he had not said. Or they had taken out of context that which he had said. And what? What? As they sat there, these religious ones, oh, they'd have been in, in their identification, oh, they'd have been ones who would be looking for the praise of man. Thinking, oh, yes, we, we, we're doing this for God. But they, the God did not have their hearts. But Stephen, yes, what happened? He looked steadfastly. They looked steadfastly on him. They were looking and see. yes, this man, who is this man? Who's done these great miracles and wonders. And many have come to 
to leave our own religion and become ones who are centered upon this, this Jesus who we condemned to death and we thought we'd seen the back of him. And what did they see with Stephen? They saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. The very, the very light, the very life of God was shining out of Stephen. Lord God, thy servant Stephen was a man after the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ himself and was so filled with the Holy Ghost and fire that even the council as they looked upon him and the accusations were brought against him could see one thing and that his face so shone that it was like the face of an angel. May in these days you find people, ones who were so given to thyself just as Stephen was, that you can work in them and through them to bring glory to thyself. Amen.